In this lesson, we will be looking at how to form our own sedimentary rock model. Our goal for this lesson is to demonstrate the processes that led to the formation of the sedimentary rock by creating a model. Our first thing that we need to do is collect our materials. You are going to pause the video and gather the different materials that you will need to help you create your very own model. Suggested below are some different objects that you could use. You will need to have a base material, such as a washcloth or wash rag, layering material, like paper towels, napkins, could be both, some kind of a powdery material, such as cornstarch, flour, or baking soda that you may have in your kitchen. You want to choose something that won't dissolve when it gets wet. A solid material, this could include small toys, such as Lego bricks, Barbie shoes, beads, buttons, whatever you happen to have handy. Just a, a small handful of each will do. Some water and maybe a teaspoon to help. So pause the video and go and collect your materials now. Okay, so I've got my materials and I'm using a blue washcloth as my base material and I have a napkin and a couple of paper towels that I folded in half for my layering material. Um, I grabbed a container of cornstarch from my pantry for the powdery material because I have kind of a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, for my solid materials, I grabbed some Legos and just kind of put them into a little container that I found. Those are me. And then I found some beads and decided to use those. And then I have a container of water. So I don't have exactly everything that was listed on the list in the slide, but I've got a pretty good assortment to get us started. Okay, welcome back. I hope you guys have your materials. You saw before that I collected my own materials as well. So now we're going to begin building our sedimentary rock model. Event one. A river is flowing into the ocean and is carrying sand from, the, from rocks that have eroded upstream. It settles to the bottom and forms a layer. The base material, so what you chose as your base material, will represent the bottom of the ocean. Then put a piece of layering material on top of the base material to represent a layer of sandstone from the rocks that eroded from upstream. Event number two, sometime later, there is a major flood and tons of rock and mud are swept downstream into the ocean and on, and on top of the white sandstone. So here we're going to sprinkle some water on top of the layering material to represent the flood. Then we will add some solid material to represent the boulders that have been transplanted by the rushing water. So our solid material could be our Legos, our Barbie shoes, our beads, our buttons. Just choose one of them. You're going to save the other one for the next time. This mud, rock, and boulder mixture becomes a sedimentary rock layer called a conglomerate. Event three. Our river has slowed down quite a bit now and can only carry very small, fine particles of silt. As the silt is emptied into the ocean, it falls to the bottom and, over much time, creates another layer. Due to the forces previously discussed, this silt layer turns into shale. So now we're going to place another piece of layering material on top of the solid material to represent the layer of shale. <clears throat> Event number four. As time goes on, microscopic creatures living in the ocean die, and in their shells and skeletons, or in their shells and skeletons, fall to the bottom, creating another layer. Large sea creatures die and fall to the bottom, only to be covered by the sediments. 
over time, this layer become, this becomes a layer of limestone. So now we're going to spread a layer of our powdery material over the layering material. So spreading that cornstarch or flour on top of that new piece of <coughs> um, paper towel or napkin that you just put on. Next, we're going to add a different solid material. So this could be different Legos, Barbie shoes, beads, whatever we have. Then event number five, there is a hurricane as a result of the waves pounding at the shoreline. Much sand is washed into the ocean. This comes at the rest of the this comes to rest at the bottom and creates another layer of sandstone. So we're going to add a final piece of layering material to represent this layer of sandstone. And we're going to sprinkle this layer with enough water to represent the waves from the hurricane. So at this point, you could use a spoon to kind of sprinkle over some of that water so that it gets it pretty wet and saturated. The next thing that happens is pressure. So we are going to carefully add pressure to our model by pressing down on top. And you want to think about what is happening here. So a couple of things that you should have noticed. We had some compaction. When we press down our layers, once we took our hands off, our layers were not as thick and tall as they were before. Things kind of shrank down a bit. Compaction is a process that occurs as sediment layers are continually covered by new layers of sediment. The lower layers become compacted by the weight of the new layers above it. And then cementation happens as dissolved minerals become deposited in the spaces between the sediments. These minerals act as glue or cement to bind the sediments together. If you look carefully to where you added your powdery material, and then once you added your water on top, look and see if it kind of cemented your objects and your layers together. Then finally, we're going to communicate our conclusions. So in your science notebook, you're going to illustrate and label your model. And then beneath your model, I want you to answer the question here. What are the limitations of a model? Remember, limitations could include things like size, space, time, materials. When you select those, one of those is limitations, so if I select size as a limitation, I also need to explain how that is a limitation. Include that and then you're going to share your response to your assignment. So laying down my wash rag, this is my base material, so it's supposed to be the ocean floor, and then I'm having my first layer, which is the limestone. And then I'm just going to kind of dip my fingers in the water and just kind of sprinkle the paper towel. So this is to show the flooding. And I don't want to just dump the water because then it makes a huge mess. But I do want it to get wet. Mm -mm. Oh, yes. Okay, then okay. so then we're adding in the rocks. We're adding in some of our holders, which helps get us to our conglomerate rock. And so that's events one and two. And then we add another layer of our rock. 
So this is our shale. And now we're putting our silt. So I just took it, one of my teaspoons from the kitchen. One of my big spoons, my tablespoons. And then we're going to add in our fossils. So my Legos are replacing our fossils. And the last piece, so now we have another layer. And then we have a hurricane. So there's more massive flooding. Finally, I am compacting. We're going to do this very carefully because I know there's Legos and those might hurt my hands. Can I do that? Huh? Oh, my hands. And so here is our rock layer. And we've pressed it so hard that we've actually got this is kind of sticking together. Kind of cemented it for us. Very cool. Thank you.